Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Welcome to your day off. My name is Corey, and I'm the host of this year podcast. Uh, today I've got like a really cool, special, like a uh, a friend host. I, it, it's hard to like uh, position her as a host because we're such good buddies. Um, but 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 you know what? I guess Tony was my best friend too. So I got a new best friend uh, today. And uh, today I'm um, I'm talking to my friend Lindsay Smith. And um, I say it every time that I, I get to talk to Lindsay. You know, Lindsay and I we. Uh, we went uh, up and down. We went up a mountain as strangers and came down as best friends. And 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 it, it was just it, it was remarkable. But hey, Linz, welcome back, man. Hi, friend. How are you? I'm happy to be here. I, I, I'm amazing. I um I'm excited about this conversation today. I'm excited about doing this with you and um and and whatever, man. But uh, yeah, me too. I feel, we've co-hosted a couple times, and I feel like it's just always so fun to hear like just from a guest perspective because I host a podcast myself. I think when there's another host alongside me, I just love the conversation that much more. It's just all the perspectives together. And I feel like we have a lot to talk through with our guests today with Ing. I'm pretty, I'm, 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 I'm way excited to, to talk to Ing and thank you. First off, thank you for, for the introduction. I guess, I guess we, uh, we did our was it an unofficial or official introduction? I guess last year at ABS we were, uh, we did the official, but but we had met uh, before that as well. But that was kind of like the official, the official, uh, the introduction. You know, I, I have to, I need to learn from you because I'm not really used to doing a solo podcast. You know, I kind of yeah. co-host. So I'm I'm the opposite kind of I guess of you. Like I like I I feel like I get lost for words a little bit when I have to do it by myself. It's a good, like, it's a nice, like, shift for me as well. I feel like we're kind of, like, trading each other's keys right now because it's, like, nice to have the support of a co-host. But also, like, yeah, from from listening to you and as your day off has continued to evolve and, and shift, being able to have both is just, in my opinion, a really well-rounded podcast. So I'm happy to be here as your co-host and, yeah, yeah dive in. Let's dive in. Shall we dive in? So yeah. today, are, you're going to have to help me with the name because uh, it, 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 it's a It's a, a mouthful. It's a mouth. It's a lot. It's a big mouthful. That voice you hear there is Ing, and Ing um is uh with Marlo Beauty, and I I first learned about Marlo Beauty like they were all over like there's a bunch of advertisements, but both on my Facebook and on my my Instagram, um and and it, it it's really interesting, and I can't wait to get into the conversation because. Um, I'm I'm interested in independent like distributors because you know we have we have the 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 two big that's in every town but but I'm just like I'm really I'm really Lindsay I'm gonna rely on this a little bit on you as well it's like I'm really interested in 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 how the market share works and, and how and how all that works out. Yeah, I'm excited to kind of dive into the community aspect of Marlow Beauty. I, I'm local here to Metro Detroit where Marlow Beauty is based. And I feel like when Marlo and I first connected, um, it was around our summit. So I hosted a summit in 2022. Marlow Beauty was one of our major sponsors for that event. And I was able to connect with Marlo at that point just over the phone. But initially, right as soon as I connected with her, I could tell that there was something very different about Marlow Beauty as a distribution company and their vision for the industry and, and beauty professionals as a whole. And so now in my role as a consultant and focusing on supporting predominantly female identifying CEOs, COOs, entrepreneurs with community initiatives, growing their com community, scaling their community, nurturing their community, I've been able to step into consulting with Marlo Beauty. And so I've worked with their digital team. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Their studio space is incredible. Um, but Ing is just a wealth of knowledge. He's the way he thinks is very high level. And I'm excited to hear um, just how he has really scaled Marlo Beauty to where it's at today, but even more so where he is directing it and, and sees it going in the future. All right. Well, I'm going to hand it to you. Bring, bring Ing in. Hi, <laughs> Ing. How about you oh, do yeah. a quick introduction and, and tell everybody who you are and your role with Marlo Beauty and, and what sure. Marlo Beauty stands for? Yep. So uh, my full name is Ingmar Korstangi. Um, I got to get that out there. That's why I go by Ing. Just keeps everything simple. The only time I actually hear the word Ingmar means I'm in trouble but with somebody, <laughs> either my mother or Marlo. Yep. <laughs> Marlo the person or Marlo the company? Uh, I would say more the person. <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, I, uh, I'm super excited to be part of this today and uh, appreciate you guys uh, having me on and uh, to talk about not just about Marvel Media, but talk about the industry and, um, and the uh, salon and spa professional uh, industry as a whole. So looking forward to it. And what's your role over at Marlo? Uh, it's more of a ceremonial uh, title, but it is president. Um, but, uh, you know, somebody's got to take it. So I guess I'll, I'll take the, the, the uh, leap of faith with that. And just and just for the lack of confusion, like there's a person named Marlo who are, are they the owner, the founder? Like 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 what's 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 Marlo the person's role at Marlo the beauty supply company? So Marlo is our director of digital. Um, her father started the company in 1981 and uh, decided to name it after her. And so uh, Marlo is uh, very intensely involved uh, with everything that we do here at, at the company, um, but specifically really leading our digital team. That's I've a- been able to work with Marlo a lot more so just in my role. So Katie's my direct contact. So she's been, we're, we're going to kind of get into the marketing piece of it, and especially with studio space, content creation, working with brands, working with educators. But Marlo also, again, the two of them being able to, I, we, we actually all took a trip together to Chicago. So we got to mm-hmm. spend some time in the car together. But it's such a great like yin and yang, I feel like, between the two of you. You have such like complementary viewpoints um but the, but the experience and the passion is different and i think that's what really i mean marlo also just to to clarify for anyone listening marlo is also ing's wife so being able to kind of recognize that there's just lots of facets to the relationship the two of you have and then also just the relationship with marlo beauty as it continues to grow and her history with her dad and her family it's it's just a very rich business community everyone is really really connected and i think that family intention really comes through just so clear whether you're actually li- related to ing and milo or not you feel like family and i think that's a really um important differentiator that's huge and then uh, uh, ing uh, uh how does like like how does marlo beauty like like you guys ship and you uh you you, you ship all a- across the country right so it's not just like in the metro detroit area correct yeah, on an average week, we're shipping out anywhere from 2,500 to 3,000 orders uh, and shipping on average about 40 states a week. Um, so we're super diversified from a customer perspective and geographic perspective. Um, you know, we used to lean very heavily in the Midwest because that's obviously where we're from. But uh, these days, I mean, uh, our fastest growing markets are uh, California, Texas, Florida, it kind of follows population lines. But, um, you know, when we're picking up um, you know, the, the mass consolidation that happened from 05 to 15 that created salon centric and Cosmoprof um, created a lot to be desired from a service perspective. And, um, you know, that's that's really what led our charge uh, during that decade was just picking up where, you know, anytime you've got 40 or 50 family run distributors uh, or any 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 industry that gets rolled up like that, you know, there's there's going to be gaps that are created that uh, offer opportunity for the small and nimble. And how does it work, like, as far as, um, like, aren't there, like, distribution, like, boundaries, like, where you can, like, sell a product in here? And how does that work, like, from, like, you know, from from Marlowe's perspective? Well, it- it's, I think it's evolving, to be honest. Um, you know, that that's kind of the, the adage of the industry back from the, the 80s and 90s, where you had the exclusive distrib- distribution rights. Um, so whether it was Maley's or Beautycraft here in Michigan that had Redken, Paul Mitchell, Matrix, et cetera. Um, but I think as the consolidation of distributors that created the big two, you're right, those lines got a little blurred. And then obviously also the, the dirty word of diversion really blurred it. And um, so now, you know, I think as, as well, obviously in the Amazon age, um, you know, those, those lines are, are still there because there are obviously some regional distributors that still follow that model. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think because of the, you know, the, the reach of the internet and logistics, uh, you know, those lines for some brands, uh, no longer need to be blurred. They just need to be nationwide. Um, so it really depends on, you know, what a brand, uh, wants for its distribution. If it wants to follow that formerly, uh, you know, exclusive distribution model from a regional distribution perspective, um, but, you know, there's a lot. I mean, uh, you know, candidly, I've, I've got a nice friendship with Alex Cohen, the owner of Premier Beauty in Chicago, and they follow that model. But you know, we joke all the time that our boxes are in, in the same salons all day long, uh, but we're not really bumping into each other. Right. They've got their 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 brands that they focus on. And then we've got, you know, a lot of the hardware that salons and uh, stylists need. So very complimentary relationship there. 
when you talk to a brand, when Marla talks to a brand, is, is do you is part of the negotiation about like nationwide distribution? It is. Um, and it doesn't fit for every every brand's uh, goal. Right. So, you know, we've we've had great conversations and brought on brands. We've also had great conversations where we uh, where either we opted to or the brand opted to, you know, uh, not necessarily move forward because of the fact that we we do need to be able to ship nationwide. That, that, that's amazing. I'm so I'm so curious about all those conversations and how they happened. And then like, I'm just, you know, I'm a big fan of like how the sausage works, you know, like a fan of the process, you know, so. Right, right, right. I, no, was, same here. <laughs> I think in one of the things that's so incredible to me is the growth of Marlowe Beauty, especially like in the last few years. So I would love if you could kind of share just how you were set up with e-commerce and how everything was set up to support the growth, especially that happened during the pandemic. I, I think that was definitely just such a wild time in our industry, wild time in our world. And so I think being able to kind of share what it is that sets Marlowe Beauty apart and why the shift in the e-commerce and the direction that you see the industry growing is so important to the foundation of the business. Sure. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's super interesting. I think it was on a drive back in 2005, of going back, you know, a ways. Uh, Marlo and I were driving and we we forgot to order something. I think it might have been something for our son. And, uh, you know, the world was on Blackberries at the time. And so, you know, we looked up the last order and, and called in the order all the while driving 80 miles an hour down I-94. And when Marlo hung up with her on that call, you know, she just looked at me. She's like, you know what? That's what every salon professional wants to do. And so that started us on our path of divesting our brick and mortar division, which we sold in 2007 to Sally uh, Beauty Cosmoprof. And then 2008, we kind of dusted ourselves off and, and, you know, turned digital. And, um, you know, fast forward and we just stayed hyper, hyper focused on executing. Um, you know, we, we're both a couple of supply chain nerds. So, I mean, we nerd out about corrugated, we nerd out about tape, we nerd out about pack fill. It's almost, we leave what's going into the box. We leave a lot of that to the brand, right? But in terms of being that business partner to the pro is what we really, really focused on. And so it kind of goes into, um, you know, in the same timeline of the, of the distributor roll-up that happened and the gap of service uh, and focus on executing to make sure that the customer in Oklahoma City gets her order so she can run her business this weekend. And so we we took that as a uh, you know as a directive in terms of what we wanted to do. Um, and it was you know it was maybe a little bit from our supply chain backgrounds, but um, then you know by the time we got to 2020, we were about 65% ecom, 35% call center, uh, but we re remained 100% professional. That's one one vow that we absolutely said we're not going to break. And so when 2020 hit, um, you know, we followed the state of Michigan's mandate for about a week. And then yeah, I, I was shop vacuuming the, the warehouse in Ferndale. And I think I got kind of mad. I said, you know, I said, we've broken our back the last 10 plus years building this business. So I'm not going down without a fight. And so I came home. I told Marla, I said, I'm turning the checkout, checkout back on because we had turned it off. So, you know, customers couldn't shop. And she's like, whoa, you know, are you sure you know what, what we're doing? I'm like, I absolutely know. I'm like, these customers are going to need us. I'm like, because there's 3,000 Sally, Cosmograph, and Salon-centric stores that are going to be closed for in foreseeable future. I'm like, I know our customer is going to need supplies. And, you know, I've made all the right decisions in, in my business life, but that, that was definitely one of them. Because when we turned the site back on that Sunday night, it took, I think, seven minutes for the first order to come through. Wow. And then and then we were just off to the races and we grew, give or take, about 40 percent in 2020. Um, and it was simply because we were there for the for the business. We were there for the trade. And, um, you know, probably another really, really good decision that we made was when we huddled up our customer care team, said, guys, we're going into the gnarliest period of, of my business career and probably yours as well. I said, whatever you do when you're talking to a customer these next 90 days, you do exactly what they need or want us to do. I don't care if it's giving them free gloves. I don't care if it's giving them free barbicide. I said, just help them. I said, if we do that, everything else will take care of itself. And, uh, and so That's it was That's something amazing. I think. Yeah, no, it was amazing to see in 2021 and we wanted to see like, all right, did that explosion of growth? Was that a you know flash in the pan because of COVID? 
um, or did it stick? And then, you know, it obviously actually stuck and, and continued. So it was, uh, it was a really rewarding experience out, outside of the craziness of COVID itself, but it was really, really um, good for our team. Uh, changed, changed the, changed the, the game for Marvel Beauty for sure. I think that's like the, the customer service standpoint is what, you know, just being in observation of that, that mentality of like being the business partner to the professional, being the business partner to us as artists. I'm a hairstylist behind the chair. Corey is a hairstylist. And so being able to recognize like sometimes in the expansion and the growth that distributions have, that companies have, that brands have, sometimes we're forgotten about. Sometimes us as the professionals are kind of the last on the list of, of who's, you know, prioritized in decision making, especially when it comes down to the bottom line and, and, you know, profit. And so being able to recognize like in that time period, 2020, especially when things were just in our industry so heavily impacted, you know, livelihoods were impacted, businesses were closed in, in, in such dramatic ways. And I think being able to see Ing, that you took that approach right away of like, hey, whatever has to happen, like however we have to support our artists, that is what we're doing. So, you know, no offense to the big brands, but your focus was not on supporting the brands. It was focusing on the business owners, the small businesses that are trying to stay afloat through this unprecedented experience in, in the beauty industry. So for for you, I know I've heard some of these stories, but I don't know if Corey has or, or our listener has. So I know the customer success team is just incredible. Austin is so incredible, even again, when you've gotten on the phone and you've talked to people. But give us kind of an example of, like you mentioned a client in Oklahoma, let's say, who, who has to get her product, her order. How do you get to know that client avatar? How do you get to know me, Lindsay, as a hairstylist? And how do you it's, figure out my needs? It's a, it's a great question. So when we were rebooting the business digitally back, you know, I would say from 08 to 2013, um, there was definitely a transition that happened because instead of going out to our stores and being able to see customers, you know, shopping an end cap or walking down an aisle, um, that all went away. Right. So we're on we're on track to service probably close to 40,000 different accounts this year, most of which are independent uh, cosmetologists. And during that initial five years, um, it was not lost on me the fact that we weren't seeing or talking to many of our customers because they were placing an order online, which kind of freaked me out. So I would uh, pick 12 salons between here and Indianapolis, pick 12 salons between here and Cleveland, pick 12 salons between here and Louisville. And I would have our customer care team set up, just give them a heads up that I was going to be in their, in their area. And I was going to swing by with some samples to introduce myself because I wanted to see who this customer was. Right. And so I'd get my, my station wagon and get my bag of samples and hit the road. I mean, I love a good road trip anyway. So um, and it was fascinating. I mean, I, I walked into some really, really nice Aveda salons and I walked into, you know, a two station salon in somebody's garage in the middle of nowhere where, you know, I was kind of like, what's something? Am I going to get a 12 gauge pulled on me? <laughs> um, but the most amazing thing that happened, especially when you got a guy walking up with, you know, a sport coat and some samples and I got a funny name, um, you know, you break through that. You're just talking to Judy. Right. She's got her two station salon in East China, Michigan, uh, which there is no stoplight. And she's just cranking out some great business. Right. She's got a full book of appointments that she's doing every week, every month. And she just needs basic supplies to run her business. And that was a really important step for me because it, it put a put a face to the name of these customers that were just in a database. And it left such an impression on me that I dragged our customer care team on a lot of my road trips going forward. I was like, hey, guys, well, we're going to do this because I want you to see who these customers are. And they had this same experience. They're like, you know, we would drive all the way to Cleveland, hit six or eight salons. And then, you know, we talk about it all the way back to Detroit. And, um, you know, it was super interesting, but also very, very informative in terms of uh, building out the Marlowe Beauty brand in terms of the distributor that we needed to be for them. And what was your biggest learn on that road trip, on those road trips? Um, I really got to learn Google Maps. <laughs> <laughs> who uses google maps what year was it <laughs> but uh no it was it was the fact that you have to keep um the your customer at the core of your radar right the brand there there are so many brands right but at the end of the day the customer that's on our website pulling the trigger on an order to run her business 
She is at the core of everything that we do here. And as long as we keep that true every single day, every single week, every single month, you know, there's a pretty good chance we're, we're going to have an opportunity to, to be in business. And every time I'm on stage, um, I say the same thing, and I'm going to use this opportunity to say it here. Um, and I'm, if you've listened to the podcast, I, you, you hear me say it all the time, but but it, but it means a lot to me. And that is, you know, pay attention to the brands that are there for the hairstylist. They're not there to to sell you a product. You know, pay attention to the ones that that, that believe in your business and, and believe in you as, a, as an artist, as a stylist. And when you have the opportunity to, to spend money, make sure that you're spending money on those brands that are supporting us. Because, you know, those brands... Um, they when they're supporting the hairstylists, when you do business with them, they have the opportunity to help more of us, and 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 I appreciate that so much. So so bravo, bravo to Marlo. That, that that's really really good. Yeah, and it's cool. I think that um, you know I was very fortunate along my I've been with the company now twenty four years, which is kind of shocking. But uh, along that journey, it was also had an opportunity to meet some really really amazing people that at different points. Uh, of the journey were, were able to give me some really good insight. And um, I'll give you one example. And, you know, we're, I always tell folks, we're kind of like Costco slash Ace Hardware to the trade. Um, when we were rebooting the business, right, most, most manufacturers thought we'd actually sold the whole machine, uh, you know, to Sally's Cosmoprof. But eventually, as we kept placing purchase orders, they started to realize, oh, they're doing something. <laughs> and um, we, for, you know, the business really runs almost like a, a direct marketing model where it's new customer acquisition and lifetime value. And so we were very, very early to pay per click and to, to kind of extrapolate on that. We did a postcard mailing into the state of Ohio to all salons and something really interesting happened. And at the time I still kept a full-time desk in our call center because it could, it's really the best way to keep a pulse on what's happening with your business is to talk to your customers and I got a couple of calls from some salon owners in Ohio and said, God, I'm so glad I found out about you through this postcard because I use Wella Color Charm and uh, I'm having a really hard time finding it in the supply I need to run my business. I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, well, Sally's, because they're turning more and more retail, aren't carrying the inventory I need to run a salon. Well, I had a really good relationship with Ruben Carranza. So he was the next person I called when I hung up on with those calls. And I told him and Ruben being Ruben figured out in four seconds, like we got a problem. He's like, they don't know about you as one of our primary, you know, online distributor options for, for salon owners and stylists to find that value-based Wella brand. Uh, you know, there's a good chance they leave the brand because they're probably not going to jump from color charm to Wella international just because of the price value difference. And um, so our partnership with Wella went to a whole new level because uh, they were instrumental in helping us market Marlowe Beauty from 2015 to give or take 2018 to tens of thousands of salons across the country. And that really also helped propel us. And so, you know, and I bring that story up, Corey, because of what you said with regards to the brands that are supporting the industry and supporting the trade and also being very supportive to, to distribution. It, it, it's amazing. I, um, I, and Lindsay, I've been trying to stay off my soapbox, but you keep wanting to push me on my soapbox, but <laughs> you know, I think that, I think, um, I was really disappointed in the industry during COVID. You know, I, 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 I was really, I, I thought that it was a time where we could put down the Wella brand, we could put down the Redken brand and they could have come together and they could have supported us as an industry. And, and I felt like for a lot of the brands, it was just a money grab to go after our clients. And, 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 and I resented that so much, you know, like immediately everybody wanted to sell online, at least the brand from the brands, not the distributors necessarily, but from the brands, they wanted to go direct to customer. And, and I thought that, that, that they took the opportunity to cut us out. You know, in the best of worlds or the best of sense, I would have loved for all the big brands to have gotten together and and done like a Super Bowl commercial saying, hey, we got your back or something like that. You know, and, and I just thought that 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 they really like given the opportunity, they went straight to our customers. And and, and that and I was a little salty about that, if, I, if I'm being if I'm being honest and if I'm being frank. Um, but but yeah, I was a little like uh, I was a little uh, uh, disappointed, I guess, is the best way to say it. And, and then as soon as we came back now, they started selling us. You know what I learned during COVID? Lens, give me one second. We'll get into it. What I learned during COVID that we're the end customer for the brands, not our clients. But when it came to like during COVID, no, we were no longer the end customer. So what do they do? They went right after our clients and it burned me up, man. It really burned me up. Lynn, sorry. 
No, don't be. I, I'll let you take it. But I agree. I mean, I could I could just echo that all day. I was a national educator for a brand before the pandemic hit. And during that time that the the salons were closed and the education was shifting and everything was, you know, just so up in the air, the the brand that I taught for, this was in technical education, not around business, but the technical education company that I worked with went directly to the consumer and kind of same thing bypassed. And then also wanted us as educators to create content and videos and shift everything onto virtual as quickly as possible for very, very little compensation. And we're saying it to us as educators, almost as like a thank you, like, hey, you're home, you're stuck, you don't have any money, you know, make this and we'll give you, you know, just peanuts on what you would have been paid for actually teaching. And I, that was when I, I decided to leave that role. And I, it was just such an eye opener for me of that level of quick shift where it's like, oh, we just now have cut out. And, and again, that brand actually really struggled. And I, I, I still don't see it back to where it was when I was um, an educator for that brand. And so I think being able to start to recognize like us as, as the professionals, we are the mouthpiece that helps really bring products to customers, to consumers, to people who are at home, then picking up their products off of their shelves and in their shower using and having, you know, that process, we are such a key component in that. And so when we're respected and we're treated well and we're supported by brands, it's it's that symbiotic relationship that's so important. And so that brings community into our industry. And I agree, Corey, I think 2020 was such an eye opener. Um, and there was a big shift. I think it was really easy to see the brands that were supportive and the brands that unfortunately were not. And so being able to kind of then see now in my role as a consultant with Marlo Beauty and helping Marlo Beauty continue to grow the community side of everything through digital marketing, through their pro to pro blog, through, you know, just all the initiatives that are kind of front end helping connect artists to each other. It's really cool when those things all kind of work together because that digital space and the way that Ing has kind of set up e-commerce and the way that everything is kind of direct to it's so it just flows so smoothly. And I think that really is it's a place where you can find education, you can find support, you can find connection, you can find resource, you can find customer service, you can talk to a real person. It's that whole gamut of as their their avatar as a woman in the beauty industry running a business and having to place orders and not having a lot of extra time, being able to know that that part of my business is taken care of and I don't have to have stress or overwhelm is just, yeah, it's a huge differentiator. I, I, I'm going to echo something that you said, and then, and then we'll throw it over to Ng about it. Um, but like, I, I judge all companies now by their customer service. Cause I feel like, I feel like uh, if they're investing in customer service, that means they're investing in me, you know, unlike a phone call to Verizon where they could care less, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But, 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 um, but it's, it's those again, back to it. I judge every company by their customer service. Their customer service is, is spot on. Th then I know that they actually care about me. The individual, not, not not the person that's that's cutting you a check, you know, like on Verizon every month. You know, they, they really care about me, and and I, I those are definitely the companies that that I lean into, and those are the companies that I'll continue to do to do business with. But Ang, how how are you guys set up with that, and 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 what's the investment like? You know, it's if you take an annual view of your customer relationship, um, you know, customer service is is priceless. It doesn't it doesn't cost you anything. It's just that's what your business is. Right. So when you see an independent stylist that's spending thousands of dollars with you a year to, on supplies to run her business, um, you know, our motto is our every one of our professional customer care team members has a thousand dollar budget to remedy an issue. Mm. The reason it's a thousand dollars because they'll never spend it, but it gives them the confidence to spend it. So, you know, we've got an average order value that's nearly two hundred dollars. So, you know, that's five orders worth of budget to fix something. <laughs> so. Right. You know, we've sent flowers, we've sent pizzas, we've sent Starbucks gift cards to make up for errors we've made, um, right? We've sent whole orders at no charge. Just do what's right. Do what you would want. And if you follow that motto uh, as, you know, as a distributor or any anybody in business really as a whole, the, 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 the stuff takes care of itself, right? And then the, if, if that stylist is in a solo suite or, you know, a salon's by JC suite and she tells the other 24 tenants like, gosh, you know, I just had this uh, crazy experience with this company called Marlowe. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're, you're going to have a chance at, at staying in business and, and hopefully a chance to win. So, um, you know, that's kind of the motto that we take here is like, what, and we we're, we're the same way Marlo and I nerd out about customer service, like especially the cus companies that do it really well, because that those are the ones that really get your attention. You're like, man, they're, they're doing something different there. That's cool.
isn't it bizarre that customer service is different? <laughs> like, like yeah. you know, at the end of the day, that that everything would be built off of that, you know. And and to, just to echo you real quick, Ing, is that um, one of the big two? I literally uh, stopped having them deliver um, products to me because, as a as a salon owner, I don't have a lot of time, you know. Like 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 you know, my business and my money is is you servicing people. So you know, if, if I have to check in products, then it takes me you know whatever thirty minutes. And then um, so I was doing my color order, and as we know, there's a lot of like particulars in a color order right you have to you have to check in each each box and each color and each developer and stuff like that and i'm telling you every single one of my orders was wrong now here's what happens is like it's missing one box right so you know it's like a it's like a, a ten dollar thing so what they would do is i would call in took time took time to get to customer service took time to do all that um I, and then it was it was um like i said it would be like a ten dollar box of color or an eight dollar box, whatever whatever the cost was for it so I took time for that. So now that color doesn't have value to me because I just blew my $8 worth of like, like time calling it in. And then what they would do is instead of they would credit me for my next order, they would send it out to me and then credit me for my next order, which then now it's like, I can't keep track of all these $4 transactions. I can't keep track of all these $10 transactions. And mm -hmm. then, they would send it again. Now it's five days later, or four days later. Now I've got to take that same time to now check it all back in to make sure it's there. And and it just got to be too much. So I just stopped doing it completely. And, and I literally drive. It, it's more time efficient for me to drive to the store, pick up exactly what I need. And in an instant, I know whether they have it or not in an instant, you know, and then right, right. there's no more thought about it. And, and I, I can't tell you how valuable, like, if there was really good, if there was really good customer service there, how valuable that is, Lynn? I think that's just like, that's the exact pain point that we've actually, I think Ing and I have had some good conversations around this because of specifically the independent people. The, the, I was an independent hairstylist for, for over a decade. I feel like being able to recognize the time that is involved when you are solo and you're you're navigating all of the facets of, of the business. And, and that was one of the pain points I saw forever. So in my business at its peak, when I was really, really um, financially successful and, and very busy in my, my business behind the chair, I would order direct because again, in my mind, the, the ease, the fast, like automatic, like get systems for everything. And that was how I was able to, as a solo entrepreneur, scale my business to the point that I had. But because of that, I also had that pain point constantly of issues, orders being wrong. But I saw this connection of like, well, wait a second, I want to get like something for making all these orders. I want to have like points or loyalty or something like I'm, yes, I'm little, but like I'm, I'm ordering a lot of stuff and I should be able to have education and I should be able to get reps in here to talk to me about what's new. And I should be able to have, you know, like this is all the stuff that to me was such a pain point. And I think now being able to see in so many, I, I coach hairstylists, salon owners, beauty professionals, again, also in estheticians and, and manicurists, makeup artists, all of those facets. And I think for all of us, especially when it comes to supplies, you know, gloves, foils, caps, like the thing, the basic stuff, especially like there is no bigger pain point than not having that on hand. And I, I think, again, especially for the solos, recognizing that if they're in that pickle and their order's delayed or something's wrong or something's not delivered, like that really could cost them a day's worth of work that could become a situation where it's really just like the, the entire day is now screwed. And so acknowledging for me, the number of times I've coached people who then take that same approach, they're like, it's easier, faster, better for me to just go in my car, drive to the big two and pick up my things. And again, that like pulling tabs and keeping tabs like that completely defeats the scalability of our industry. We, we emphasize putting systems into place, automating things, getting things, you know, doing all these things at the scale that you want so that you can hit that growth. But then recognizing that when you're pulling tabs, putting them in a bucket and taking them to the store and using that to, to order, it's such a it's such a big gap. And I think Marlo is really bridging that in the sense that like you can actually place orders with confidence and know that they're going to arrive, not damaged, not dented, not with developer leaking all over the place, not with just all the pain points that come. And you can kind of like automate and, and have that access without being constantly getting to the to the store. And I think then adding to that the community facet of having Proto Pro, having education, having video, having content that's available so that you can also learn like that is just such a perfect marriage. 
I kind of want to get into what you just said, and that's in that's community and how Marlowe is kind of setting themselves up differently than 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 um, or just showing up differently. I don't want to say against anything because I don't think it's that. But but but, you know, I think so much of this industry is how we show up. So, you know, I, I'm going to kick it to you, Linz, or kick it to you, Ing, whoever wants to pick up. But like like how are you guys like community based? How are you how are you supporting um, the industry as a whole? I'll jump in here real quick and just on the, just on the sense of community, I think because I'm a hairstylist and because I've first witnessed Marlo Beauty as a hairstylist and I've been able to sit in their studio, I've been able to receive education from artists being sent in from brands, being able to, yes, I'm consulting with them and I'm helping with different facets of community, but I've also received the benefit of community within Marlo Beauty. And I think that's a really, um, that's a big thing that I think just to kind of kick the conversation off around that it's not, it's, it's that family approach. It's that like customers first, it's that kind of always making sure that you're recognizing the needs of the people that you're serving. So I know Ing will have a, an expansive answer on how specifically community drives the business. But I think just from my perspective as a community expert, it really starts like individual by individual person by person and, and rippling that out into the industry as a whole. Yeah, no, I mean, our path was, you know, was almost kind of like a, a, a side journey when it came to community and education. But um, a lot of it was rooted in really paying attention to what was happening on MarlowBD.com. And as a whole, we started to see a certain amount of traffic, I'd say about 2013, 2014, uh, that was coming in off of some really random searches. And the only way people were searching those searches was that they were salon and spa professionals. And so we built out about 50 or 60 landing pages that were answering those funky questions um, because it was going to be super qualified professional traffic. And in the span of about 36 months, it started driving an immense amount of super, super qualified organic traffic. And so our light bulbs went on like, wow, I'm like we got something here, guys. And because the traffic was coming in, and of course, right, Susie from Oklahoma City didn't know us from a hell of beans. I was like, oh, who are these people? Right. So and so we saw the traffic that was coming in was a super qualified and B was converting to turning into um, registered, uh, not necessarily customers, but they were at least inquisitive enough to, to register with MarlowBD.com. And that for us was kind of the beginning of our, our, our journey of, of education and um, content support, where we built out Pro to Pro, uh, which was, you know, extrapolating off of that experience. And now uh, pro to pro is our content blog where it's anything from uh, downloadable forms that are supporting, you know, something like how to salon, sign a smart salon lease or how to sign a smart suite lease, hair color release forms, depilatory release forms, you know, very professional content that was, was going to be assistive to that professional. And um, I will say two of our, you know, top five manufacturers are well on American international uh, both who have a you know really nice stable of professional brands, they in, in communication with them on an annual basis, they were you know taken back by how much we were doing on Pro to Pro, and that took us to the next level where we started doing live education uh, through social channels back in 2017 ish, and uh, Wella was really supportive, AI was super supportive. And we were doing live education at a number of different salons here. We were doing live education in the Wella studio in Calabasas uh, on a quarterly basis. Um, I would say the majority of the content or the education we were doing, obviously, in, in California was with Wella, uh, was obviously on Wella-owned brands. And then on the ones that we would rent out local salons here in Metro Detroit were a lot of American international brands. And... It kind of got a life of its own, and but you know we didn't really have a great a, a great single space uh, that we could use. We were running out salons on a Sunday or Monday when they were closed, um, you know, and that was working fine. But we'd have to, you know, we'd had a s- small uh, truck that we would take all our stuff from our warehouse, and so we kind of had a method to our madness to doing it. And the thing that kept us going was the engagement levels from pros all over the country when we would host these events. And so uh, a business across the street from us vacated a really neat space. And one of our team members is like, well, you know, we spend all this money on renting out these salons and travel back and forth to Calabasas. Like, what if we started our own studio? And we kind of looked at each other. We're like, God, you know, that's a brilliant idea. So we checked in with a number of our manufacturers, say, hey, if we go forward with this, right, or is this interesting to you guys for us for, you know, brand support and brand education? And it was a resounding yes. 
And so uh, that was kind of the start of, of building out Marlo Beatty Studios. Um, we actually have a manufacturer in today doing uh, content creation all day with uh, two of their artists. And, um, you know, it's really taken a life of its own. So it's, it's really digitizing what was commonplace with the ex former, uh, you know, exclusive distributors that got rolled up into the big two. You know, whether it was Beautycraft or Maley's here in Michigan, right, they always had good content or good educational events at their headquarters. Uh, but this allowed us to get the content and education out on a national basis because it was digital. And we would have people, you know, log into these events from all over the country. It was just fascinating. Um, and so we were a little early to it. But, you know, that's also, I think, uh, why we, you know, we're as far along as we are in, in terms of uh, being able to operate Marlo Beatty Studios today is because we had five or six years of really good experience. And yeah, sure, we stubbed our toe here and there. But, you know, the during the events, you know, as long as you were really human about it, we're like, hey, hang on, guys, we'll get the Zoom link back. Hang on a second. <laughs> right. And so all that stuff is now commonplace. But back in 2017, 2018, it was still pretty new. That's pretty cool. And so can, so do, do, um, who's your market there? Do, do brands rent out your space or do you rent it out or, or, or could like independent educators come in there? Like, like how does that all work out? I mean, we're kind of building the machine as we fly it. We're pretty, we're super open, right? Um, if a uh, local stylist, we had a group here that does, um, there's two stylists in the area that majority of their business is focused on bridal. And so in the spring, they asked if they could use the studio for an event. And I think they had about 30 or 40 stylists that were really interested in learning more about how to do bridal, uh, be in the bridal business for, from a salon perspective. Um, and then, you know, we are very engaged with our, our current brands that, you know, whether it's for content creation or education, we had a really great class the day after our studio launch party with Kenny Duncan from Andis. Uh, we had about 40 barbers from the area uh, that came to partake. Um, so, you know, we're, we're Let me jump in real quick and just say, I love Kenny Duncan. He's one of oh, my, he's, the best. Ever, he's incredible. Incredible. Oh, so great. He's just so warm and sweet. And if you're listening in and you don't follow Kenny Duncan, definitely look him up. He's a, he's an Andis educator. Um, and uh, he's at all the barbering events and, and we get to see him and, you know, aside from just being a warm, special guy, what a talent. Holy yeah, right. God, what a talent. Yeah, yeah, I think that was what was so cool about the studio launch party, especially. I mean, even what Ing had mentioned about taking some of the team and going out on these road trips. I even within my role, I was passing out business cards and postcards and invites to local barbers, to local salons to invite them. And again, that was part of like this studio space being here in Metro Detroit. I, I like I mentioned previously, this is where I live as well. And so recognizing that this is here, I, th there were so many people I met in the process of introducing them, inviting them to the event, and then actually at the event itself, there were over 100 people in the studio. Um, but being able to really connect with the local Metro Detroit barbers, hairstylists, makeup artists, all the beauty professionals here that are like, oh my goodness, the space is available. This is something I could host a networking event here. I could have a class here. Do you offer education? I can come to a class tomorrow with Kenny Duncan. Like, whoa, what? Like that piece too, I think is such a differentiator in the distribution model, adding that content piece and that education space. I, with Commonwealth, my community, I've hosted an event at Marlo Beauty Studios. We hosted a networking event early last year. We had over 50 people then. So again, it's a, it's a good size space and it's perfectly set up for um, flexibility within content creation, within education, within um, the ways that brands are able to really great get great quality video and content, but then also the way that educators are able to have that space locally here instead of having to go to, you know, Chicago, for example. Ing, so is it set up where like you can, you're set up to actually do uh, like uh, Zoom videos from there and stuff? Like, could you rent it out just to do a Zoom class? Is that how it's set up? Yes. Yep. Yeah. It's kind of multifaceted. It's about a 3,500 square foot space with, uh, it's kind of like it got a lofty, lofty feel. Um, so when Kenny was in, we had, you know, had him up on uh, a small stage that we erect. Um, uh, we've also got three active working shampoo bowls. Um, so we've done, you know, we've done a number of, uh, things both for, for hair, for color, for nails and for, uh, skin and spa. So it's pretty versatile. Um, you know, and the, the nice thing is about, I think with the, the way that content is these days from everybody, whether it's on TikTok or Instagram or zoom, yeah, it's, it's, it's live and it's raw. It doesn't need to be manicured and, and so perfect. Right. And so I think that reality of the content that we put out with the with the people that we're working with 
Um, some are, you know, very, very well-known educators and some are people that we've just gotten to know here in Detroit that are really, really good at what they do. And so we're giving them an opportunity to get known, you know, and in, in to our customer base. So it's a, uh, and it's, it's a living, uh, living being, right. And, and we're, we're really just getting started at it on it because I mean, we've had the space now lens for what, give or take a little over a year, mm-hmm. um, you know, but we're, the team's really gotten it down now, uh, the digital team and, and it's amazing. I mean, honestly, it's almost like we're running two different businesses under Marlow Beauty, where on my side, I'm calling in from our distribution center here in Warren, Michigan. And then uh, Marlow and Katie and the team are based out of our former location in Ferndale. And they're, for all intents and purposes, running a digital marketing agency, right? They're, I mean, 85% of our business now is e And so that in itself is an undertaking. And then with all the content and marketing uh, that they're doing at the studio, that's a whole nother uh, undertaking. So, um, you know, they, they're they there creating all kinds of great content for our pros to, you know, to be able to take advantage of, um, you know, to help support them in their business. And then we're over here on the operations side, right, getting their orders out and as fast as we possibly can to help them run their business. That's so cool. Hey, what's What's been the biggest, like... I mean, I, ha- I have an idea, but like, what's been the biggest like shift or, or switch from going from a brick and mortar to like digital? You know, it's a, uh, it, it's, it's a path. <laughs> yeah. um, I think it's one of those things where when we started out kind of had in my mind, um, you know, just from like a logistics and distribution perspective, okay, we're going to go out and build this e-commerce company. Then you flash forward about 15, 18 years and you're like, oh crap. We've built an e-commerce company. Yeah. Um, whoops. Like, whoops, geez. <laughs> um, you know, and there's all kinds of stuff. And I'm fascinated by technology. I'm not a technologist by any means. Um, we have a, uh, a digital marketing agency that we've worked with for about 15 years. And uh, they have two founder partners, one that is on the marketing side and one that's on the technology side. And the one that's on the technology side, for all intents and purposes, are, is our CTO. And so I lean on him a lot for a lot of the, the server side uh, management. Um, and he's like, God, he's like, I don't meet too many business leaders that are as interested in this stuff as you are. I'm like, well, yeah, I'm like, it's the crux of our business. So, you know, learning in terms of running redundant servers on different parts of the country and uptime and all different kinds of snippets of software that we've got running behind the scenes of marlobd.com so that that experience is 24, seven, 365 for any professional that comes to the website. Um, it's, it's been absolutely fascinating to, to build it. And I think now coming back into almost brick and mortar, it's so funny, like the evolution, because now with the studio, it's like kind of coming back up into establishing locally here, just like more community and and having events. And they're like Ing had said previously, this is kind of like being developed currently. This is still this is still growing. This is still something that's going to change and evolve, especially coming into 2025. I know there's a lot of projects there. Yeah. And I will say one thing that to go back to your question, Corey, it was absolutely uh, very, very rewarding for us. The fact that we, when we came into the business that we did have that chain of 14 stores because we remember enough about that customer's experience of shopping and finding ways to translate that to a digital experience, right? When you walk into a, a beauty supply store, the way an end cap looks or the way a pallet position looks, Um, right. And the information that's there from the brand, right. So we've got to replicate that on screen because we don't have the stores, you know, the stores online and it's, it's digital. So, but from a merch perspective, an education perspective, SDS sheets perspective, everything you got to compartmentalize into that single web page in order for the, you know, the professional to be able to get the best experience possible. That, that's awesome, man. I'm, I, I'm so excited. Like we, we were talking a little bit offline that like um, Katie and I were going to head up there um, uh, probably probably early spring or so. Um, we definitely want to head up there and, and take a look at it um, as we're starting to expand what 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 we're doing for the community and, and just um, the education events that we're doing and stuff. I'm just I, I'm excited to, uh, to to have another location um, that 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 we can move into. I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about that 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 notion there. That's cool. Yeah, and it's sure. really, it's an incredible space. Like I think um, Ing, Ing, Ing described it perfectly, but the, the the flexibility of the space is what's so incredible. And again, some of the ideas and plans that we've been able to sit down and 
I've had the privilege of kind of ideating around and, and the growth that can come from this incredible, what, 3,000, 3,500 square foot space. I mean, it's just, it's almost endless. It's really incredible. The studio launch party was such, um, just such a success and such an eye opener of the need of that, the need of these spaces to come together. I do think that that's something within the industry. Like I personally know that there are not a lot of spaces that are community focused like that, where you could come in and you could teach a class and you could maybe record a podcast someday, or you could have a content day and bring a photographer in so that you could get some great shots with shampoo bowls and, and stations and things that would be set up just as they are in your salon, but have a different backdrop, a different space. And I think that that aspect of it is really incredible and unique and different from the traditional distribution method that exists in our industry. This is again, with the digital marketing team that Marlo Beauty has built, it's there's so much more to Marlo Beauty than just product distribution. That's that's just like Ing said, there's multiple businesses being run from this. But one of the biggest things from my lens as a, an industry professional and as a coach and as somebody who talks to so many other beauty pros, having that community piece is really, truly what makes the difference. It, 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 that's great. I mean, I, I'm so glad that you brought that up, Lynn, because um, that's so it's so important to me. Right. Like, like, like I said, I mean, I think it kind of goes back to what I was saying. And like, you know, who's supporting our who's supporting our community? Right. Who's supporting yeah. this hairstylist and and not as a number, not as just j just an opportunity to sell a product to, you know, like like, you know, I kind of you know, looking through it through my lens. Like I feel gross when I've been in those situations where I'm just selling a product to person when I've worked at like bigger like chain salons and stuff, as opposed to something that I really am committed to. You know what I mean? And 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 and, and I'm, I'm glad that there's somebody to kind of support like, you know, what's right for my business, not what's right for their business. You're up. Well, and I'm just going to repeat too, like the, the focus of being the business partner to the professional in my role, as I've supported Marlo Beauty since April of this year. So I've had enough time now to really understand the in and out of that relationship and how important that is on all levels, not just from customer success, if your order is wrong, but also from the way that we're, we're supported and treated from the education standpoint. So recognizing that Marlo Beauty pays all of its content creators that they're they're paid and compensated so that piece too being able to really bring that in there's so many brands so many distribution companies that do not offer that that do not have you know again a budget set aside so that artists are truly compensated with money not with products not with samples not with you know a free class like actual dollars to be able to support them in their businesses and then also having that space of coming to like, hey, if you don't if you don't like this product or, or you use this and it's not authentic to you, like we don't want you to share it. Like come come back to us. Let's find a product that you really love and we'll work with you there. And I think that that approach is just really needed in our industry as we continue to grow. Ing, how can people get to you and like how can they sign up for accounts uh, at Marlo? How can they how can they use how can they use Marlo in their day to day? Uh, it's super simple. I mean, uh, right. Just come in and register a, a, at the new account creation page. We keep it pretty quick. Um, we do validate every single cosmetology license number and business tax ID. We have no, no, no interest in selling to the consumers. Um, right. It's like we made that decision in 2008 when we when we were rebooting the business. Like we're going to be 100 uh, percent committed to the beauty trade. And so, you know, there is a little bit of a sign up process, but I think it takes about 45 seconds. And, um, you know, we're doing out of our 85% of our transactions that are e-com about 50 to 55% of our are done on mobile. Uh, the rest of it's done on desktop. So, um, you know, we're always, our mindset is always mobile first and everything that we do just so that from an ease of transaction and ease of, um, use. So, um, you know, it's super easy and we see an interesting, uh, one tidbit that I find fascinating is that we see a pretty big, uh, lag time between time of registration and time of order simply because there are so many customers that find us that never knew we existed right and you wouldn't right if you're from greenville south carolina or you're from uh you know lakewood colorado and you stumble on marlobeauty.com you, you may not be in your ordering cycle right so we see people a lot of people that register a lot of them pull the trigger right in that same same day that they register but there's a lot that come back two four six weeks later and place their first order so that's super promising for us because it just shows like, hey, they stumbled upon us, they they bookmarked us, or they you know they kept the uh, welcome email, and then uh, you know as they came into their order cycle for something that they needed, uh, you know they come back and pull the trigger. That's pretty. Uh, that, that's amazing. I'm just I, again, I, I can't, I can't, 
iterate enough how excited I am about um about Marlo um just just about a brand that like really supports us you know like like that th- th- that's exciting to me you know yeah that's cool uh, oh by the way it's marlo.com right m a r l o.com marlo beauty marlobeauty.com awesome yeah. so go to marlobeauty.com definitely set up for an account and 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 I'm I'm super excited about uh why do we always say super excited Super, super excited. Well, check out check out Pro to Pro too, because I think again, being able to tap into just the content that's available and and go through you know blog articles and and meet other professionals, you know, artist spotlights, people that are using Marlo and connected to Marlo, um, and how it's you know again worked within their business, what their business structures look like. Um, there's just a ton of content. It's really it's there's a lot there outside of just ordering. Yes, order, but like Ing said, in that four week, six weeks between your order schedule, you know, check out all the other aspects that are available, not just the great prices and the customer success. Through that is is, you know, like obviously at the end of the day, the most important thing for distribution, but the community space too is is just a great place to be a part of as a beauty professional. Yeah, one of the neatest one of the neatest things that we've seen when we do these um, live education events on on the different uh, social channels, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, uh, or Zoom, is when we see communication going between the different pros that are attending the event. Right? They they're like, "Hey, Judy, you know, I, you, so that was a great question. Like, you know, can you give me a little bit more detail on what you do with that color? Blah blah blah." And so then they start having the conversation as if they were sitting next to each other at a live show or a live class. So it's uh, it's really, really neat. And it's so powerful, right? We're on a Monday morning at, at 10 a.m. or two in the afternoon. You know, we can get up to, you know, several hundred professionals from across the country that are engaging with this content that we're putting on. And it's super, super powerful for them. It's, yeah, sure, it's enjoyable, but you can tell that it's truly, truly educational and it's going to help them in their in their trade and their in their business. That's amazing. Linz, uh, give people a shout out. Where can they find you or how can they follow your podcast or, or, or whatever you're up to? Sure. Thank you. Um, LS Beauty Pro is my personal handle on social media at common.wealth.co is our community page. Um, Our podcast is Commonwealth Conversations. I'm excited to put this episode over there as well. So yeah, come hang out with us. I focus again, like I said, predominantly on female identifying entrepreneurs, founders, CEOs, specifically those who are looking to grow and nurture their communities, whether that's online or in person. So I'm happy to co-host any day with you, Corey. Me too, Linz. Thank you so much. Thanks for making time for us and, th- and arranging this conversation because uh, it, it's really cool. Uh, Eng, Lindsay, thank you guys for hanging out with us today or hanging out with me today. And thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off and, and Commonwealth, right? Yes, absolutely. That's great, guys. Really appreciate the time and uh, have a wonderful week. You as well. Thank you. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review to listen to all the latest podcasts. Please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet and to stay connected on and off the show. You can follow us at hair Street on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Peace and love.